What's up guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic and in today's episode of Scrap Mechanic I actually wanted to revisit a build that we had done quite a long time ago Many of you guys will remember this tank as the very first thing that I had ever built in Scrap Mechanic And I was really proud of it at the time You know what a lot of people were building small cars or kind of simple ships I wanted to build something that was big a little bit more extravagant and this turned out really well You know it has eight wheels it could steer it could drive you could physically get into it and close a hatch behind you and it looks like a tank which was my main goal but now that I've learned a lot more about the game I'm not quite as proud of it as I was before you know the steering is wrong for a tank the hatch is in the back which isn't how you actually get in and out of a tank and the turret couldn't move and it's kind of blocky it looks a little bit like a minecraft tank I had only used steel to make it because I didn't really know a lot of parts so I've taken some time and I've built the sauce tank mark 2 and this thing is so cool so it doesn't just look a lot more like a tank, which is something that I figured I would be able to do because I was a speed build in the last episode. This one is a little bit more time, a little bit more thought out, but it also operates a lot more like a tank. And that is something that I really wanted to invest in because that's the hard part of this game. Making something look like something isn't too difficult. Making it actually work takes a lot of foresight and thought. I feel like that's the cooler thing to show people. So like uh, with this one, it has the, the hatch in the back. It had that awkward little button and it would just open up a hatch for you to get in and that worked and that was really cool but that's not how you actually get into a tank whereas the mark ii actually has like a hatch on the top and its default position is up but if i get into it which you can see the seat there if we actually get in i can hit three let me zoom out a little bit i can hit three and it'll close it and now we're in battle mode so that's really cool that that's how that actually works and the other one the steering was a little bit different it steered like a car so when you would turn a wheel the wheels would actually turn back and forth for you to steer that's not how tanks work tanks have two individual tracks and that isn't really possible in scrap mechanic using a seat but it is possible using buttons so i have two buttons hooked up to each side which is each attached to one motor so if i hit one button one side will go and if i hit the other button the other side will go if I hit each button then we go forward and I can turn one off to try to steer it a little bit oh dear okay it takes a little bit of learning but it does work now because of that I actually have the steering in the seat freed up and I can use that to steer our turret so I can actually look at whatever we want to shoot at now with our operational turret it's so freaking cool it still has some issues where it gets stuck on terrain, like if it's not even and you have a couple of wheels off the ground, the rest of the wheels aren't powerful enough to move all of this steel. I don't really know how we would go about fixing that, but I don't know, maybe we'll come up with something at the end of this episode, I'm not really sure. So if you want to get out, all you have to do is press 3 to open up the hatch, and then when you get out, it automatically kind of thrusts you up here, because otherwise you would just get thrown into all of the steel, and then if you're lucky, you can jump out, but sometimes it's a little bit buggy. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we're out. So yeah, that's how it works. It actually works really well. I'm really pleased with it. And it looks like a tank now. It doesn't look like a hunk of steel. It looks almost like desert camouflage. Really, really happy with it. It does have this like little anti-personnel cannon on it, which doesn't rotate individually. It rotates with the turret. But if you wanted to make it rotate individually, it wouldn't be very hard. You just have to put it on a bearing and then put the bearing in with the sensor in the middle. I'll probably show you guys the sensor, actually. I can probably cut my way in and show you guys the insides because I'm, I think I have a bit of an idea for what we could do to make it get over weird terrain. So it's kind of, it's got this shell on it of these um these rebar these are just like eye bars that's how i pretty much built the entire tank with these yellow eye bars and then we'll break this off like that and then you can cut into it that's the inside and it's really simple it's like i said all it is is a couple of buttons and a uh, module and then a seat and two engines that's it it's it's actually not very hard to build it's just kind of hard to plan out and not have stuff glitch together but I was just thinking, how could we possibly get over terrain that we're stuck on? And then I realized we do have a little bit of space in here. I'm kind of curious. Would you be able to stand up in here, I wonder? What if I... Ooh. That might actually work. I put something like that there and there. And then I could even put some in the back. Because the thing is, I don't think these need to be outside, right? They can be inside. And then we would kind of have like a, a Star Fox 64 tank where it would actually jump ever so slightly up over something. This might actually work because the thing is, I, oh man, I'm so happy I thought of this during the episode. You can actually hook this up to the seat because the seat isn't driving anything right now. The seat turns the turrets, but moving forward with the seat doesn't drive the engines. Those buttons do. So 
technically that should make us jump. I kind of want to try it out. I'm not even going to put the back on right now because we want me to do some troubleshooting. But if I, whoop. Okay, that's set back to default. So if I get in, we can hit three. Okay, now to move forward, we're going to do one and two. And then if we want to jump, we should just hit up. Oh, it's, it's a little, oh, there's a bit of lag. Oh, it's not enough power. We're too, we're too heavy. Too much steel. Okay, well, hmm. I wonder if I could put more in it. This has to be enough rockets, right? <laughs> this is so many rockets. Okay, I think once I try this, I'm gonna close it up. And if it doesn't work, it's not gonna work because there's just no way. Actually, you know what? I might even be able to put a couple more in here. I could block it off and we can go in from the turret, right? We might be able to do something like this and then connect them magically from the outside. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna ruin my tank trying this, but screw it. Okay, I need I need to surgically do this from the outside. This should be possible. I can do stuff like that. I'm afraid this isn't gonna be a little jump anymore. This is gonna make us take off. <laughs> but it'll be worth trying. We're gonna give it a try. You know what? I don't feel really confident because if I get into the tank now and those rockets have screwed up the way that the tank kind of shoots me out and up through that hatch, then I might just get stuck in the tank forever and we may end the episode there. <laughs> but you know what? It's worth it for science. So we are going to sit down. We're in our tank. We're hit three to close the hatch. Good. One and two to drive. Yeah, okay. So if I turn off two, then it turns right. Yep, okay. And if I turn off one, then we turn left. Okay, everything is still working. Right? What are, you, what are you doing? Okay, good. And I can turn the turret by turning the wheel. Okay, the turret seems to be not working. That's not good. What about takeoff? Oh, 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 it's not quite there. No, it's too heavy. And the turret bearing is loose. Oh no, <laughs> it's a disaster. Are we even getting off the ground at all? Are we getting a little bit of air, anything? No, we're, we're moving one, we're moving one wheel with all of those rockets. <laughs> all the same, look at that. That is a formidable sight. What a cool looking tank. I'm actually really, really proud of this. But you know what? I think I'm going to leave this episode here, guys, because I have a feeling that I'm stuck. If I hit E and my hatch isn't lined up with that hole, it's just going to throw me into the geometry. Yeah, that's what I had been concerned about. <laughs> No, I'm somewhere in the turret right now. If we can zoom out a little bit. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be it for this episode of Scrap Mechanic, guys. But hopefully you guys like this tank. Like I said, I was really proud of it. I wanted to take some time to build a proper tank because the tank is a really cool thing to build in a game like this. And I didn't want it to be left to be a block. It deserved something better. So next episode, maybe we'll build something else really cool. I still want to try to get a flying machine to work. I still want to make, uh, maybe improve on the motorbike we built last episode because we got the self-correcting thing fixed. I don't really know, but there's a lot of stuff to do in Scrap Mechanic. I'm looking forward to playing more. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Whoa, 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 Nessie, whoa, Nessie. Okay, we're just gonna crank you up to, you know, max. Screw it, wheelies for days. Go, wheelies for days! Okay, a little bit, <laughs> little bit much. A little bit high on the back wheels, but you know what? I think we can maybe feather it to get up to speed. Just, just feather it, just, just feather it, and then give her all the gas. Oh my God. <laughs>